Good morning and good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning, this, uh, this weekend. Happy Family Day weekend. You know, it's kind of like uh, kids are out of school on Friday. They get Monday off. We have five beautiful little girls that uh, we're sleeping over with at their house looking after them this weekend. And, you know, I'll try and be able to track here, I think, with a little less sleep. But we're having a blast. We're having a blast. And, um, you know, we're just so glad they're here with us. want to welcome everybody that's joining us online as well. And following our services as we share the Word of God, which is a real privilege and an honor. I want to talk this morning about uh, all in the family. All in the family. And I know that kind of, you know, if you're my age, you're kind of like, oh yeah, I watched every single one of those shows. You know? Hi, my name is Archie, you know? And... Uh, you know, that show was interesting how it exposed a lot of things back in the day. And, uh, you know, Archie Bunker came to love his black neighbor. And even though he uh, was always being sarcastic and making uh, colorful comments, no pun intended, um, it really did, it did expose a lot of things of the heart, which I think is interesting. And so I like the name, All in the Family, because, you know, last week I talked about Jesus' radical mission, his radical mission. Well, All in the Family is our Father God in Heaven's radical mission, or I should say vision that all would be in his family. It's a great family. You're supposed to amen right there. It's a great family, I said. <laughs> it's kind of like you're not quite just, that still wasn't that great. It's a, his family's a great family. Amen. All right, I still have to convince you, but, you know, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Family's a beautiful thing. And um, I have, actually, I'm very, um, I, I think it's awesome that our government gives us a family day weekend. I think it's fantastic that they are acknowledging family with all the things that are said today and all the things that are going on and all the negatives that are being propagated uh, against family and all the pressures that are on people and family and the importance of the quality of the relationships within family that are getting strained by economics and you name it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that we have something that's called a family day. A family day. So what's so great about family? Well, we all come from one. Well, maybe we don't all have one. Maybe we did come from family or someone, obviously. And maybe all that's a little bit broken. Um, I know I, didn't, I wasn't raised in a very perfect family by far, and I know lots of you haven't either. Uh, anyways, um, and so my family was kind of dysfunctional and, uh, and yet uh, started to become whole. And uh, I found Jesus when I was 18 and uh, I became, started to become whole. I'm still working on it. God's helping me. And uh, I was able to do family different. Bonnie and I got married in 1984. You do the math, and uh, we had three children. And we started doing family different than what we were raised in. And it was like a brand new start, a whole new future. And our prayer is for our kids that they do family a whole lot different. They have a whole lot better start than we did, each of us, in our families. And so our prayer goes, and, and the legacy of family goes beyond me but look what happens when god touches you and god saves you and you become a follower of jesus and you begin to impart that within your family and you just watch that now you're talking about your children's children and your children's children's children and you listen let me just speak to something right now okay if you think jesus is coming home and back to the earth and you know that it's in two years or five years or ten years or thirty just hold on a minute. You don't know when. So don't stop being a family and don't stop sowing legacy into your children, into your children's children, into your children's children. It's children. 
Don't stop, okay? Just because the world is a little crazier than you've ever known it to be. Well, well, if, if you lived back during the First World War, it was a little crazy then, too, okay? But family is really important. It's really important because belonging is important and not being alone is important. And so God sets, he does something that is very, very um, opposite to loneliness and isolation and vulnerability is that God sets lonely, lonely people. He sets the alone into family. And the good news is that you can be in the family of God and have no natural family around and you can experience what God always intended for family. It's actually cool. You can have all of it. If maybe you're already in a, a healthy family or in a family, you can be in the family of God and actually mature in that family so much so that you influence your natural family so much that all of a sudden there's change and it becomes a happy family instead of like a sad family. I mean, God's at work. He wants everybody in the family. God is an all-in-the-family father. It's, I'll, I'll read what it says there. I kind of quoted a little bit. But Psalm 68, 5 to 6, it says, A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. This is the very nature of who God is. Okay? He sets the lonely in family. He leads out prisoners with singing. But the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. You can rebel against God. That's fine, but you live in a sun-scorched land. God says, I, I want you to be my kid. Let me adopt you. I love you. I, I want you in the family. I'm, I'm going to send my son to die on a cross to provide forgiveness for you, to bridge the gap so you can be restored in a relationship with me, your father. I want you in my family. I don't want you wandering around in deserts and, and in a sun-scorched land. In fact, God sits lonely in family, and he leads, he leads out the prisoners with singing, those that have been caught in, in places that are far away from God. And he provides forgiveness, as, as we heard about today. So what God does is he restores value and worth. Now, many of us come from situations and experiences, and they're traumatic in some cases, where our worth and our values have absolutely been robbed of us. And then here comes God, our Father. Like, I love this verse. This is who he is. I've experienced him this way. And he offers acceptance instead of rejection. Acceptance. You can be accepted in the beloved, accepted by the Father in heaven by simply turning to him and saying, I need a dad. I need a spiritual father to lead and guide my life. Well, he wants to set you into his family. So he restores value and worth. You know, that is actually the marker what God intended for family all along, except it's a fallen world that we live in. And so value and worth, I mean, it's like a father saying to his son, I really would hope that you would grow up and amount to something. And there's these words of fathers and, and mothers that end up being more rejection and separation and loneliness and hurt than this voice of a heavenly father. He is actually here today as I speak and when I say this to restore value and worth to you. He sees each one of you and he loves each one of you, not one not more than the other. He's God, and he's very capable of this. Even today, his Holy Spirit is, is nudging you with confirmation that that God in heaven loves you that much and is saying, listen, there's a place in my house for you today. In 1 John 3, verse 1, the first part, see what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that's what we are. So the Christians in the room, you know how great the love of the Father is and how greatly he has literally lavished it, spoiled his love upon you. He has dumped it out in, in great quantity right upon you into your life, and you know it. And you know it so much you want... You want your children and your children's children and your family and your neighbors. You want everybody to know that. And you want them to know this great love the Father has laugh, lavished on you. You get to be called. You and I get to be called children of God. Hey, son. Hey, daughter. You're one of his. 
He says, that's one of mine. You're his. So Father God adopts us as his very own. I mean, think about this. It's in the Bible. Ephesians 1 verse 5. It says that he predestined us for adoption to sonship. That includes daughters. Through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. And if you're a parent today, you understand the pleasure of children. He adopts us to sonship through Jesus, his son, through faith in his son Jesus. It says it again in Romans 8, 15. It says, the spirit you received does not make you slaves. The spirit you received, capital S, spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit you received when you were brought into his family because you accepted his son and you were born of the spirit that spirit you received doesn't make you slaves so you will live in fear of again i mean fear of being alone fear of being rejected fear of being not part of god's family fear of being all alone and rejected rather rather everybody say rather here's the transition the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship and by him we cry, by him, the Spirit worked it out, by him we cry, we cry literally, Daddy or Abba Father. You are the living adoption certificate that is written in the blood of Jesus. In other words, through faith in his son Jesus, through Jesus, okay? And then the seal, it was sealed. It was sealed by the Holy Spirit. Your adoption was sealed by the Holy Spirit who came and took up residence within you and lives in you today. Sealed. What, a, what an adoption certificate. Do you want one? They're available. Because he's still adopting. He's still adopting. He's still sowing this. He's still saying there's a place where you don't have to be in fear again, but rather by the Spirit this adoption can be worked out. So our Father God's really perfect and loving, contrary to maybe our natural fathers. But what our Father in Heaven does is He reverses the curse of neglect and rejection that we expect, experience in our life. I've, I've experienced that in my own life. I actually heard that. I remember announcing that uh, it was... Uh, when was it? It was 1984, and I was in love, and I announced that uh, Bonnie and I were engaged and going to get married. And my dad said, wa said, oh, and walked out of the room and said, I really hope that you go to college and make something of your life. We, kind of, we cried. I cried. Yeah. Now, the cool story is that my dad was the one at the wedding. I still remember him sitting right about there, bawling his eyes out. And then grabbing yeah. me yeah. And, and Bonnie, but me and looking me in the eyes. and Son, I am so proud of you. Yeah. I love you. See, so you reckon, had to reconcile. Hey, I love you. Now, that's a nice story. Yeah. That's a beautiful story, I know. And you long for that. Some of you long for that kind of beautiful story. That conversation never happened with your father, with your mother. And I'm sorry that it didn't happen. I really sincerely am. I'm grateful that I had that experience. But maybe you haven't. And this Father in heaven is perfect who wants to, wants to come and adopt you and heal, heal, his, let his acceptance, contrary to the rejections that were spoken, let that heal you. Let that restore you. Let it forever break the fear of rejection and forever strengthen you to overcome a spirit of rejection that is pushing you away and lying to you about your worth and saying you're worthless and you don't have any value. That's a lie. That's a lie. God died for you through his son Jesus. He gave up his life. That's your worth. You're worth the life of God. It's astounding. I'm worth that much. You're worth that much. Yeah, really. So we get to, I wrote it this way, we get to reside in the orphanage of his spirit. 
no longer stunted, unfed, neglected, not held, not cared for. One worker helping 30 maybe, sitting in our filth. We get to reside in the orphanage of his spirit where he feeds us spirit, soul, and body, and he nurtures us emotionally, physically, educationally. He feeds our spirit. He nurtures our heart. He nurtures our heart. Family, family is all about the heart. I'm worshiping this morning. We have grandchildren sitting here, and I see the youngest one. Just following along. I mean, that messes with me. Right? I mean, come on. Come on. That wasn't me when I was her age, you know. I, wow. Okay, I'm getting off track here. Father, we pray right now, Lord, for those that are carrying deep, deep injury, God, from a father or a mother. And Lord, even right now, as I speak, let the power of your Holy Spirit just come and heal those places. Those weren't your words. Those were words from a human being who was probably also hurt, was probably also rejected and had pain in their life that was not restored. So God, absolve every one of those thoughts, I pray today, in the hearing of your word. You're here to adopt them and bring them into your family. Loving Father, in Jesus' name, amen. He cares about all the families, you know. He cares about all the families of the world, all the children. You say, does he really? I see so many bad things happen. Well, he's going to work through you, his children his sons and daughters. In Malachi 4, verse 6, it says it again in Luke 1, 17, about Jesus in the very same way. Malachi is prophesying of Jesus. Luke is, is Jesus, he, Jesus, basically in Luke. But he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of children to their parents. Or else, I'll come and strike the land with total destruction. In other versions say a curse. This kind of turning hearts really conceives the Holy Spirit and the birth of God in people. See, when when a child, a teenager, an adult comes to Jesus, do you know what they do? When they find God their Father, they then, wherever they can, if they're still living, they begin to pray for a father and mother who maybe they are hurt by or are in health with and they all of a sudden learn how to honor and it goes the other way as well where a father I've seen this man have I seen this where a father humbles himself because he's found Jesus and or he humbles himself because he grows in Jesus and he lets it go And he goes to those kids and says, I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad you're my son. I'm so glad you're my daughter. Please forgive me for what I said. That's not my heart. But sometimes you don't connect with that heart until we actually connect with the Father's heart. Because he looks right through us and he shows us that stuff. He's so merciful. I just pray that God would just birth transformed people and families and bring about the conception of sons, spiritual sons and daughters as we speak humble words in faith to reconcile and to heal and to restore within our families. You see, all this whole idea is God's family, the, the community around us, our own households. It's a biblical family culture, really, that God created and he wants propagated. Um, I'll, mention, I'll mention this one, uh, our household. Like our household, our, our home, our family. 
who lives under our roof kind of a situation. Um, basically our natural family. Abraham Lincoln said once, he said, the strength of a nation lies in the homes of its people. The strength of the nation lies in the homes of its people. You see, so parents have this really wonderful responsibility placed on them by God. God, God talks about this in Psalm 127, David, through David, he says, sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward from him. They're like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Our sons born in one's youth. Blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. So it's, it's really just not about us. It's about a nation. It's about a people. It's about a purpose that we literally raise children up and we're literally raising generations who will raise generations in God and we are shaping a nation and we are undoing did the dysfunction of the devil and the enemy against homes and, and unhealthy families and bringing functional, happy homes and families through the grace of God. You see, because all along, this idea, community, God bless you, is that family is the hub of spiritual discipleship for children. It is the hub. It's the center of the wheel, the place where it all turns where God in Proverbs 22, verse 7, and through the wisdom of Solomon, it's spoken to us. Again, train that child in the way that they should go. That when they're old, they won't depart from it. It's said different ways in different versions here. But train them up. It's, it's a hub of spiritual activity of training them in a direction. You say, well, I didn't get that. I didn't have that. But you get to do that. You get to do that. And, you know, you say time's lost. It's never lost. If you're breathing and living, you have a voice and you can say things to those little darlings that, that come along. And, you know, you can hold the baby and look in their eyes and tell them how much God loves them. And you just, you just minister to those babies. Maybe the parents aren't. It doesn't matter. You just look in their eyes. Look in their eyes. Minister Jesus to them. Hey, and pray for them. Because, you see, that's what God desires. All in his family. All in the family. Family disciples its own. You want to learn how to disciple people? Well, we start learning how to disciple people in faith by discipling in our own homes. Really, the family is the root place of discipleship. I mean, in the root word is disciple, discipline, disciplining, discipling, all those things. And uh, this is a great place to learn. In Ephesians 6, 1 to 4, it says to children, it says, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, don't embitter, don't exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Don't frustrate them. Train them up. Let this be the hub. Be men, men and fathers, those that are fathers, you want to be one. Be a leader in your home. Be a leader. Be a leader. If you're a single parent family, you're a mom, lead. Let us help you lead. Let us cover. Let's watch out for one another. Let's be a family, the family of God, so that honor and obedience is developed and manifested in those places. It's crazy how we exasperate kids today. And here at the very core of family and is this relationship or the heart of family, okay? And it's the heart of family where healthy relationships uh, are manifested, okay? In God, he wants that heart relationship. He doesn't want it. It would be like, I would come here on a Sunday and I would say, church family, you better get your life in order this is what you have to do go do it don't do this don't do that and it's all this set of rules and it's like you came back next did you do that well i didn't you go sit in the corner right now because you know there's no room for that and and we can be dictatorial but where's the heart i can make the same appeal in love and just say listen listen to me why would I have relationship with you? Why would you sow into the relationship within all your family and continue to do that? And maybe you didn't do it well. Maybe you were gone lots when you were younger. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, they're teenagers. I don't know. This is hard. Yeah, it's different yeah. and harder. Yeah. Keep the relationship going so that the heart is there. Right. The heart, because that's what's under attack. 
with all kinds of distractions that want to break down relationships and you know the sickness I, I'll just be blunt the sickness in social media where we're so addicted okay to what we have to say and read on a screen a glowing screen the glory of the glowing screen and we take our kids to the park and I see this all around I'm I'm probably I'm guilty of it too and we're looking at a screen and they're saying look at me look at me hey like it's all around us it's all around us they're crying for attention and the screen is a babysitter I've done that we've put a TV on for our kids to watch and then we were convicted and went no that's too much so we don't do it with the grandkids now we have relationship we just do it different we're just like there's something there I know I'm stepping on toes here but there's balance in all things okay let's have balance your children need you looking into their eyes and affirming them I'm talking about a father in heaven that affirms you and places value and worth on you when you engage with them in the things that they're doing and you're talking and you're acknowledging what you're doing you're growing them you're giving them a picture of who the father in heaven is not some distant distracted supernatural force of something or other no a god who's personal and comes and lives within you and is with you every single day family provides daily living examples that's cool that's cool so you know how well we we just don't learn from book reading or being told we actually have to put our hands to it and we actually need examples too so guess what mom and dad aunts and uncles grandparents who you you can be a single aunt or aunt or uncle you're in a fishbowl whether you like it or not you're in a fishbowl and those kids those those eyes are just like I learned the the worst words by looking in a fishbowl well they said that well that must be a word my sister says don't say that don't say that that's a bad word we were just small but you see mom and dad and we're all modeling what love faith and relationship is we're we're actually the parents in their marriage are the best modelers of a loving relationship to their kids and how they work because you don't get along all the time and you get in disagreement and you work it out and maybe you blow it but then you they see you looking at one another and reconciled and saying the words of kindness to one another and they learn from that and you're in a fishbowl and that's the way it's meant to be it's the way it's meant to be for siblings and grandparents and friends and extended family family cares for its own in first timothy 5 verse 8 it says anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household it says has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever wow that's a that's a nice scripture for today isn't it happy family day <laughs> but you see love is the whole motive and responsibility that drives care all forms of care all forms of care but love love is the key okay this is why God is teaching you in the fishbowl husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church you know and gave himself up for her you know he who loves his wife loves himself if you don't love your wife you don't love yourself same statement why don't you love yourself then let's talk again about your worth and value why was that robbed of you why are you not loving your wife I know it's real quiet in here <laughs> but uh this is um if this is actually not really very funny because we see a lot of pain and we just want to help bring healing okay and if you don't love yourself they're gonna you're gonna really have a hard time loving your spouse you just are so can we talk about that can we talk about coming in under the care of a, of a father in heaven to be healed and really here by reading the scripture reading the bible to get an idea about what god thinks about you and how he accepts you and how he loves you and how he binds up your broken heart and how he restores you and how old things can be passed away 
and everything can become brand new that you can start out in a brand new page and there's things that he's just saying to let go that puts its finger on it you really can't wiggle one way or another because you know what i'm kind of out of time here today i'm going to call the worship team to come but when we get right down to it and we talk about not only our natural family we talk about the church family and our goings on and our interactions from the heart or when we talk about our community out there there's a family to build out there just like this is an established family here do you know the bible says something quite astounding it says it kind of summarizes the you know the old testament commandments and it says if you want to fulfill that well here it is the new testament love the lord your god with all your heart mind soul and strength and it says number two is like it it says and love your neighbor as you love yourself i'll i'll I'll, may, I'll i'll rephrase that if you can't love your neighbor you probably don't love yourself just like the husbands love your wives as christ loved the church it, it's similar isn't it that if we're not walking in in a healed identity in christ that we are adopted as sons and daughters we're going to have a hard time building that out community out there and yet that neighbor that neighbor that you don't like that drives you crazy is a the most wonderful blessed gift from our father in heaven that you could ever receive you don't all believe me because see he wants all in the family and guess what you you get to be the reflection of him to your neighbor those that live right next door bible says that it says you know it's better a neighbor nearby than a family friend or somebody far a friend far away well that's impossible we don't have a relationship to start one yeah, come on. you but you're gonna have to forgive them yeah. they don't even know god necessarily but you're gonna to have to let go all their comings and goings and all their carryings on and about the things that their dog does on your lawn everything 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 you're gonna to have to make people more important than things you're gonna to have to make relationship uh, with people more important because God cares that all are in the family and you are the person you're it you're it your family your natural family that frustrates you and aggravates you and the things that are broken right now that is all a gift from god for you in this life to grow in the character of jesus christ somebody say amen, amen. and there's healing right. through you yeah, because you can be healed because you've been adopted as son or daughter and this is the place and this is the now for you to be restored and for you to forgive and for you to be the agent of change and influence within your own family to see them come i'm hearing stories of people's family coming to jesus i just heard one in my office this week and i'm like wow sure starts with you and i really having our identity healed really knowing really really knowing that we have great worth great value i love this family the family of god and uh i love that i get to place worth on you as i get to know you and we build relationship of the heart it's beautiful this family has been my family our family for years and years and years and years and years and we have family that are that that our family from here that are all over the world in the community today and we love them right. some people say well how are you doing with those people great I actually love them sitting down talking we love them why would we not why would we not i challenge you why would you not why would you not you're i love the church we love the church here hill city church we love the church in our community we're not a better church we're not a superior church we aren't the church that has everything and has the corner on it no the church out the, out there through abbotsford canada the world those are the saints of god that's your family too 
Let's speak well of them. Let's have a relationship with them. They're gonna, the, those neighbors, they're going to know we're Christians by our, our love for one another. And what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful opportunity it is just to be real as God wants to bring all in the family. I'm going to invite you to stand. I had multiple more points. That's crazy. But I think I should say I know, I know that the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you right here in this area of acceptance versus rejection. We're going to sing. Okay, and I'm going to come and close in prayer.